One might have thought that the computer, the rise of the computer, would encourage a certain kind of vulgar materialism. The idea, so after all, we are machines, so after all, uh, everything about us can be explained in terms of physics and chemistry. Paradoxically, the real effect of the computer on psychology and on philosophy of mind has been a decrease in that kind of reductionism. See, the thing about the computer is that when you work with computers, you very rarely have to think about their physics and chemistry. There's a distinction that people draw between their software, meaning their program, their instructions, their rules, the way they do things, and their hardware. And generally, you ignore their hardware. You talk about computers at the software level, and you wouldn't really be able to explain what they do in a way that would be of any use to anyone in terms of the hardware level. You expl the, there is a kind of emergence here, although it's not a mystical kind of emergence. It's not that they're violating the laws of physics. It's just that the, the level of or at higher level facts about organization have a kind of autonomy. You say this, the fact that it's following this program explains why it does this, and I don't need to know how it's built. I only need to know it, it can be built in such a way that it will follow this program. This is a return to a view, and if you apply this to the mind, it suggests a return to a view of the mind that I associate with Aristotle. There's the view that we are not ghosts in a machine, mm. not spirits which only temporarily embodies, but that the relation between the mind and the body is a relation of function to what has that function. Aristotle said if you use the word soul in connection with an axe, and of course he said you don't, you'd say the soul of an axe is cutting. And he said the soul of the eye is seeing. And he thought of man as a thing that thinks.